Hey guys. guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Alexis and I'm from the US. And I am Louis and I am Swiss. And together we make all kinds of videos about living, but more specifically about traveling in Switzerland. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you're traveling to Switzerland this summer, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stick around. So in this video, we're gonna give you our top 10 underrated destinations. Switzerland is unique in that it is such a beautiful country from end. Yes to end, but still Agreed. I find that the tourism is really concentrated in a few pockets. If you're coming here, particularly in the months of maybe June, July, August, and you go to these areas, they're gonna be beautiful, but you might feel like you want to escape the crowds. And we have some destinations here that mm -hmm. are much less visited and just as beautiful that I think you're really gonna enjoy. <laughs> So the first underrated place that is often overlooked but is beautiful and dear to our hearts is Ticino. It's actually an entire canton. <laughs> yes, this is the Italian part of Switzerland and this is usually overlooked either for Lake Como or just other regions of Switzerland. They have beautiful cities, Locarno, Ascona and Lugano, really recommend. And those lakes that are, I think, competing pretty well with the Lake Como, but you'll have less people and maybe a different experience than being in Italy. You'll have these lakes, these mountains, beautiful valleys also with different little villages. I really like Ticino for this kind of diversity of things and also having a little touch of Italy and Italian culture. We like to describe it as like the sensation of being in Italy but with <laughs> the infrastructure and efficiency of being in Switzerland. So I really love it. I think Escona is one of my favorite places in Switzerland. It is absolutely beautiful. So if you are in Switzerland, if you're in Zurich, it's quite easy actually yeah. to get to Ticino. So it's definitely something that we recommend checking out. The next underrated place that I recommend checking out is Adelboden. This is right in the center of Switzerland mm -hmm. in that Berner Oberland region that so many of you love and are traveling to. It's actually on the Berner Oberland Pass, which we recommend a lot. And I love Adelboden. And I think one of the main reasons that Adelboden is off the map is because it's not accessible by a train. It's mm -hmm. very easy to get there with a bus. Just because there isn't that direct train connection, I feel like it removes tons of the tourism and it is absolutely Stunning. We tend to actually go to Adelboden every year on our anniversary. We like it so much. There are beautiful hotels there. We love the Cambrian. We have videos about the Cambrian and about Adelboden. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful place for a lot of different things in Switzerland. They have that famous giant swing that you see all over Instagram that you can get up to with gondola. There are beautiful waterfalls and it is absolutely just amazing winter or summer. So I definitely recommend checking out Adelboden. You have to get on a bus, but it is no big deal and it is well worth it to avoid some of the crowds. And it's close to the Ocean in Zee, which is actually a bit further from Interlaken, for example. This is a direct bus ride to Ocean in Zee from Adelboden. The third underrated place is within the quite famous region of the Jungfrau and Interlaken. This is the Menlichen Peak. This is a peak that I think too often is overlooked for the Jungfrau Jahr, for the Grindelwald Fierce, for the Schildhorn. That are really cool peaks, but that are going to get crowded with a lot of people. The Menlichen for me has the best view <laughs> out of all these views because you can see all the different villages. You, see, you can see Grunewald, Muren, Wengen, Lauterbrunnen. You can see some lakes. You can see the Jungfrau super well. It's really a, a really nice peak. And the cool thing also is that you can come from Wengen and then with a the gondola and then go down to Grunewald or the reverse. So this is a, a great experience that is both convenient with that kind of geographical location that links Grunewald to Lauterbrunnen valleys and and just the views that you can get there. So really, hopefully I don't get too much crowd into the Menlichen because I, I love it, but uh, I think this is worth knowing as a peak in the region. So the fourth place that is a little bit off the beaten path tourism wise is Sasfe. Now Sasfe seems to be one of those gems that Swiss people have discovered, but international <laughs> tourists have not yet caught onto. I think again, like a previous recommendation, it's because there is no train station that mm -hmm. goes to Sasfe. So that <laughs> eliminates a lot of the tourism. It is super 
easy to get there though. You go to Visp and then you take a bus mm -hmm. just for that end leg to get to Sasfe. Sasfe has a lot of the same charm as Zermatt. It's in the same region of the Alps, it's in Valle. And Sasfe is also a car-free village and has a similar look to Zermatt in yep. a lot of ways. But where I think Sasfe is different is it is very, very focused on kind of like the adventure traveler, adventure tourism. You can do yes. via Ferratas and a gorge. You can ski almost all of the year. Yeah. In the summer, actually, you can go see marmots in the hike. It's really, really cute. And we're looking forward to taking our daughter. I loved also year. the possibility to go see glaciers in the winter or in the summer. You can have some glacier hikes. It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, actually, this place. So Saspe is a great location for adventure. So if you want to be where the Swiss people are vacationing, mm -hmm. I find that Saspe is really one of those places and, and we really love it too. The next location that we feel is underrated and should deserve more attention is the little city of Thun. So in the region of Interlaken, which is between two lakes, the lake Brienz and the lake Thun, you have the little city of Thun that is at one end of the lake Thun and this city has a lot of charm. This has a very cute old town. It is close to the lake. You can get there by boat also from Interlaken, for example, and you have a castle, but just walking around the old town is really, really nice. You can, for example, for a rainy day or of course a sunny day, this is a great day of activities around Thun. I'm just always happy when I walk around Thun. You have the river, you have even some surfers sometimes that surf on that river. If you are in the region and you want to see a little city, Thun is one that uh, I would definitely recommend. So another place that is maybe surprisingly unexplored mm -hmm. is Bern. Bern is the capital city <laughs> of Switzerland and yet I find that a lot of people kind of overlook it <laughs> and it is super easy to get to from a lot of the destinations where I know many of you are staying or visiting. So Bern is just about an hour from Interlaken and it's just about an hour from Zurich. So if you're in either of those places, it's a really easy day trip. Bern is so central that it's actually almost functions as a base. I see some yeah. people doing it, but not many people doing it. If you see that the hotels, for example, in Interlaken are super expensive, but you want to be in that region, check out Bern because Bern is a great place to be based. It's very well connected to a lot of Switzerland. There are so many reasons we love Bern. One, you actually get to explore Swiss culture in Bern. So you have the Swiss Federal Palace. There's a lot of different buildings and things that you can explore about Switzerland in Bern. There's a lot of museums there, so it's a nice place for that. But also, Bern has an absolutely beautiful old town. It's actually one of the UNESCO protected sites in Switzerland, and I can see why for very good reason. They have that very famous clock tower that you can see there. And there's some other great things that you could do there too. We have a full video about it, and Bern has a lot of other things to do. They have a little mountain called the Gurten, which has a mountain coaster that I know so many of you like. And if you don't necessarily want to have it as a base, you can always, as it's so well connected, you can always stop there, put your luggage in lockers and go to the old town for the day or for lunch and, and explore a little bit and then continue back to Zurich, go to Zermatt, go to Geneva. But that's uh, actually, uh, with that connection, it's, it makes it pretty easy. So we had our little yeah. daughter that uh, woke up a little bit uh, earlier from her nap. Uh -huh. I think she was excited to yes. go to all these underrated places. So I think I will uh -huh. finish myself uh, <laughs> on the four last uh, underrated places in Switzerland. <laughs> So continuing by myself, but I know it uh, pretty well <laughs> the, on the, the last places. The next place is actually a region. This is the Three Lakes region. This is in multiple cantons. You have Bonn, Jura and Neuchâtel as cantons that are sort of touching that, uh, that region that is known mostly for its kind of watchmaking traditions and industry there. You have Neuchâtel, La Chaux de Fonds, Bienne that are the cities around there and you really have a lot of different activities, museums, you can visit manufacturers of watches, you can have a lot of different activities around this and, and this is I think something that people might not know exists as much so we're happy to share this but it's not only for watchmaking, you have these really cute cities for example Murten Mora is an absolute beauty of a medieval city and you have features of the region that you can see in different other favorite regions for example 
beautiful vineyards and some pretty good wine actually around the lake of Neuchâtel and Bienne. Or also lots of hiking but with much less people around lakes or even on the Jura. So this region is maybe something that you can add to your trip if you are interested in that watchmaking part and if you want to see a region that is a little bit less touristy. The next place or region again that I would recommend is the Engadin region. This is in the Graubünden, Grison region close to St. Moritz, but there are lots of different villages around St. Moritz that are really cute and stunning if you are, for example, taking the route of the Bonina or Glacier Express. Filisur and Bergun are beautiful villages that have a very different architecture. You'll find no tourists there, almost, or some Swiss uh, tourists, but you'll see some buildings with the facades that are covered with paintings that are really, really beautiful, these Scrafito. I love actually that, that region, and if you are over there with the Glacier Express or the Bonina Express, make sure that you are staying maybe in these villages instead of St. Moritz. You have Squirrel also, amazing villages. It's really enjoyable to, to walk around these little villages that have that type of architecture, especially as it's going to be very different from the rest of Switzerland. And the Engadin region finally has some really good food. It has that dried meat of the Grison that is delicious from beef. You have also the Nusterte that's a nut tart that is stunning for dessert. So these are two examples of some good food that you can get there that will be different from other regions in Switzerland. And the two last places are both around Lake Luzon and are accessible from Luzon pretty easily. These two places are the Stanzehorn and Stoss. They are also both places that you can access with the Swiss Trail Pass on an SVB day card for free. There is no additional cost which is pretty cool actually for these kind of mountain areas and mountain experiences. This is pretty rare with the really cool these, this is pretty much it. And I thought that actually these places are a good alternative or an additional day to uh, Pilatus Kulm or Rigi Kulm that are amazing, that I love and that have great activities. But if you want to be a little bit more away from the crowds, the Stanzeron, for example, is very easy to reach by train first and then you take a, a little funicular and a cool gondola that actually you can go outside and, uh, and experience the view from outside. Beautiful view on Lake Lucerne and the Alps surrounding the Stanzeron. You have lots of hikes, you'll see mostly Swiss people and uh, you have even some, some cool activities in the summer. You have some candlelight dinners on the, the top of the Stanzeron. So that's something to consider that I think is maybe not enough on the radar of, of, of some people that are coming. The second one is Stoss. Stoss is a little mountain village that is accessible with the steepest funicular in the world. This is really super impressive that, uh, that funicular that has I think a gradient of 110%, it's the steepest. Once you get into Stoss, you have a ski lift that is also accessible for pedestrians in the summer or in the winter. You can go up to the Fronalpstock and from there you'll have an amazing view on Lake Lucerne. And this doesn't stop there, you have a ridge hike that takes about two, two and a half hour to go from Fronalpstock to another peak and from there you can take another uh, ski lift or gondola down. This gives you a really cool view of Lake Lucerne from the other side so you'll have a totally different perspective. So I think these are two places if you are going to be in Lucerne that you should consider. It's going to be maybe less crowded and a really nice opportunity to use your Swiss travel pass wisely and just enjoy Switzerland in a slightly different way. So with this, I think this is it for me and for us guys. Thank you so much for watching. We have, if you are thinking about these places, you're interested, but you might not know exactly how to integrate this into your itinerary. I offer some travel consultation taking 45 minutes to help you guys with any questions you have and to integrate also and create an itinerary with you to really experience and enjoy Switzerland at its fullest with maybe some of these hidden and gems. I have also created some custom itineraries that we sell as well on our website in which I've integrated some of these places and with this I will see you in the next video. Bye guys! Hey guys thanks for watching! Thanks for watching! If you want to see more videos like this please make sure to like and subscribe and see you soon!